I can't express certain things um, through words, but they are, they're always there. The things I need to express on a daily basis, I need to get it out of my system. And, and it comes out when I play. It's really simple. You pluck a string and it makes a sound, and it's a beautiful sound. It's really that simple, like, that's my favourite part of playing. There's nothing quite like, you know, when you take out your instrument in the morning and you, you just, you, you tune it and then you pluck a string and there it is, you know, it, it's all there and it's everything that you feel as a musician and everything that you, everything just disappears actually um, and all you hear is that one string and that's all you need. It started off as a passion. I, I found my grandmother's sarod. It was an accident. I was playing cricket with my brother, and uh, and the ball hit a corner, and it and it just went twang. And I, I had a look at what it hit, and it was this old, beautiful thing, and I didn't know what it was. And it, it was until my father came home that evening. He told me that it's his mother's sarod. And from that day on, I think. There haven't been that many days that I haven't played the Sarod, and, and that was when I was 10 years old, so um, 20 years. Ever since I was a kid, I, I was constantly playing, not necessarily practicing what I should have been practicing, you know, scales and things like that, but I was constantly playing and, and creating new material, and um, I didn't know what that meant. I, I was just making stuff up. I started learning from Pandit Buddhadev Dasgupta, who is a legend of Sarod, and he lives in Calcutta. So I only saw him for about a month, a year. So the rest of the time, there I was in Harrow, um, you know, in, in the music room downstairs on my own, um, making stuff up because you know you, you have to you have to you have to play something. What is that something going to be? Well, there are three schools of Sarod. There's the first one, which is Gwalior, which is uh, spearheaded by Ustad Amjad Ali Khan. There's Maihar, which was spearheaded by Ustad Ali Akbar Khan, and he's passed away now. And the third one, which is the Senia Shah Jahanpur uh, school, or Gharana as we call it. And that one is spearheaded by my teacher. Learning Sarod or learning Indian classical music is very much like, and I don't exaggerate, I think, when I say this, that it, there are similarities between martial arts and, um, and Indian classical music. The kind of dedication, the focus, the, the hours that you put in, and also the, the humility needed, you have to kind of give yourself to your guru. And sometimes he will put you through hours and hours and hours of rigorous practice without, without giving you any indication of, of why you were practicing this thing. And you just have to go with it, fingernails bleeding and back hurting and you know all kinds of rheumatisms. But you work through all of that pain and then you, 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 you emerge on the other side and you realize that this is a kind of a life training kind of like ninja, you know, like they, they really teach, teach you to, to hone in the instrument and make it, make it an extension of your body. I think I have a problem with the word genre. A lot of people put me in, in, in world music and I feel that there's this silent third in front of that title of that genre and I have a real issue with that because surely world music means music from Brazil, India, Europe, Antarctica, Iceland, wherever. But it doesn't. World music specifically targets areas of the world where there is poverty, there is, um, you know, people picking up things from the trash and making instruments with them. 
or people uh, drumming on bins, you know, and then suddenly oh, they're like, oh yeah, this is, this is world music. There's something quite rustic about this. You know, it's not sophisticated. And actually, they're missing the point. The, the point isn't sophistication. The point is, is soul and passion. Bernard Schimpelsberger, who is from Austria, he's a percussionist and a drummer. Um, we met through MySpace in the days of MySpace, and he wrote to me and he said, I'm in London, can we jam? And, and we did, and I think we jammed for three or four hours, uh, solidly. But one day I said, should we make this a bit more official somehow, or should we make a band, or, 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 or a collective, or, so, or, so, or something? And he said, yeah, why not? Uh, let's start off as a duo. And so it was called Circle of Sound, and we made the first album. We went on tour, the British Council kind of took us up and promoted us a lot. And we went to Australia, Algeria, Spain, India. And then um, while we were on tour, we got bored of playing the same material. So we were like, let's write new songs. So by the end of the tour, we had 11 new songs. And we said, let's record. We needed a female presence, actually, in these tracks. It needed to be mellowed out. And so we asked Rosabella Gregory, who's a fantastic singer, songwriter, and keys player, uh, to come and collaborate with us. Um, on the same vein, we also asked uh, Fiona Bevan, who's a fabulous um, singer, songwriter, and bass player as well. And so she came and collaborated with us. I've been friends with Anushka Shankar for a while, but it's, it's never, we've never worked together. And so finally there was this one track and I just thought, we have to do this with Anushka because she's got something really special in her hand. Like there's something incredibly sweet and beautiful and yet powerful. And, and I think a lot of it comes from her father, Pandit Ravi Shankar, who's inspired us all. But, but a lot of it is her as well. And so we made this track called XY, which is literally the X chromosome and the Y chromosome coming together. So Nitin Sawney has been a huge inspiration. Uh, I was in my late teens when I first heard Prophecy uh, and these songs like Say Hello and Sunset. And they became like kind of anthems for me. I had no idea that I would ever meet him or anything would come off it, but um, I did end up meeting him. He asked me to come and play for some movie scores um, that he was writing. And, and then after that, I said, well, I would love to have you on my next album. And he said, yeah. And then so we wrote this track um, called Skeleton Leaves. It was, it's a real honor to work with him. I can't remember the year exactly, but Jay-Z was on a world tour and London was a stop and, and the venue was the Royal Albert Hall. I was working a lot with Talvin Singh at the time and Talvin invited me uh, onto that project because he was working with Jay-Z as well. And I was still at university at this point. I was skipping lessons and there I was in a rehearsal room with Jay-Z and, and all his peeps. Like, he, he doesn't understand what this is. Like, like, what, what is this Sarod, you know? So I play for him, and he starts rapping all over it. About four o'clock in the afternoon, um, all these ladies walk in with shopping bags into the rehearsal room. Uh, everything stops, and they look towards the door, and Beyonce walks through the door, and it's just like, wow, <laughs> you know? So she sits and listens to everything, and at the end of the rehearsal, she's saying, um, I'm going to do a song, Jay. And uh, he's like, OK, you can do as many songs as you want. And she says, I'm, but I want to work with these guys. And she points at me. So I was like, great, fantastic. So we ended up playing at the Royal Albert Hall. London allows me to meet a lot of musicians that I admire but also musicians. And when I say admire, they don't need, necessarily need to be famous. Um, I meet people on the tube busking. And, and a lot of you know, young musicians who are kind of up and coming on the scene 
and there's so many spaces and platforms where you can play. You can play on a pub, you can play on the street side, you can play at the Royal Albert Hall. And I think that huge jungle of platforms allows you to really freak out in London. You can just listen to a lot and be inspired by a lot and meet a lot of new people. Um, and, and along the way, if you get to work with them, that's great. If you don't, then at least you know, you've met them, you've been inspired. So yeah, I, I love London. I'd like to live here. Yeah.